Happy Monday, everyone. Um, so today we are going to do lesson 82 in math, and it's on page 426 of your math book. And rather than learning area or perimeter, we're going to work into a new form of measurement called volume. Um, so volume is talking about how much stuff could fit in a cube. So for example, if I had a bottle of water, the amount of water that can fit inside of this bottle would be the volume. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, and again, like always, I will take a picture of these notes um, so you can write these down if you would like. Otherwise, just listen. So what is volume exactly? So let's start by defining it. So volume is the amount of material that can fit into a container. So just like the water bottle example, the water itself would be the material and the container would be the bottle. So we can even write that as our example. So water would be the material. Oh, if I can spell that is. And the bottle is the container. Okay. Now, rather than looking at a cylinder type shape, just like a bottle would be, we are actually going to be focusing on a cube shape, also known as a rectangular prism. So in order to do that, we have a, a formula for volume, just like we do for area and perimeter. So just as a reminder, to get area, and you can title this review if you would like. So to get area, we have to multiply length times width, and then remember our units have that little square on the outside of it. Okay, so I'm just going to put in parentheses down here, square, just as a reminder not to forget that, and then perimeter, if you remember that, we have to add length plus, or length plus length plus width plus width, so we are adding up all the sides, and then we don't have the little square on our unit there, we just have units. And I'm going to change this just to make it a little bit easier to understand in the future. So unit square would be area, perimeter would be just the units listed. Okay, so now how do we get volume? Rather than only having two measurements, volume actually has three. So volume is going to be length times width times height. So in other words, V equals L times W times H. So let's do an example. So let's say that I have um, a cube 
if it has these measurements. So let's just pretend that the length is going to be, um, let's say, three inches. And then let's say that the width, which is right here, is going to be two inches. And then we'll say the height, which is right here, is going to be, um, let's say, four inches. Okay, so let's label these before we actually do the math problem. So this bottom number right here is always going to be treated as your length, okay? And that's gonna matter when you do certain problems. And then this measurement right here is always going to be your width. And then the last measurement which is how tall the cube is, is going to be your height. And all of these measurements will be given to you in a problem. So all you have to do now is just multiply them. And it's as simple as that. So to get volume, I'm just going to take three times two times four Okay, and the way I like to do these is I like to multiply two of them, the first two together. So three times two is of course six. And then I like to multiply the six and then the last number together, which is four. So my answer is 24. So then my volume is going to be 24 inches but volume also has a little important exponent that we have to put here. And can anyone guess? If you said cubed, then you are correct. So just like area, we are multiplying two measurements. So we have the little two as our exponent. With volume, we are multiplying three measurements so we have a little three as our exponent. So you can write your answer like that, or you can even write it out like this. The abbreviation for cubed is CU, and then we would put our label, and that's our answer. Not too bad, right? So let's do another example that might be worded just a little bit differently. And again, like I said, I will always post these notes for you. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip over. So another example. Let's draw this cube here, but this cube, we're gonna put some stuff inside of it. Okay, so I'm gonna put five inches as my length. And then my width is going to be three inches. And then my height is going to be four inches for this one. And like I said before, every single problem will give you these numbers and then you just have to multiply them. So this question though is gonna be worded just a little bit different than before. So I do want you to, um, if you're taking notes, I do want you to write this question down because this will be um, how it's worded on your homework. How many one inch cubes are needed to form 
this rectangular prism. So of course that doesn't seem as simple, but I will tell you it is that simple. It's just worded a little bit different. So what they mean by how many one inch cubes are needed to form this prism is I want you to sort of visualize that there is going to be cubes that are stacked to make a bigger cube. And um, I'll have to borrow my son's blocks, but I'll show you kind of of a, um, a picture of that here in just a second. So picture this just for now until I get the blocks, that if it's five inches on the length, then that means that there's going to be five cubes on the bottom. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five. So each one of those blocks represents these little one inch cubes, okay? So if you wanted to even write in one inch in each of these, just so you know what those represent, okay? And then the width part right here, so if it's three inches wide, then how many blocks do you think, or not blocks, but how many cubes do you think would be on the width part? If you said, if you said three, then you are right. Okay, so again, each one of those little cubes represents one inches or one inch. Okay, and then on the height, since it's four, then you're gonna have four one inch cubes that go down or that go up the height of it. And of course my, um, my drawing isn't a scale, but you can still kind of get the idea. So each one of these cubes, again, are going to be one inch. Okay, so all this is actually asking us to do is just get the volume, okay? It's just worded a little bit more complicated to get you to think. So in order to get this answer, all we really have to do is multiply five times three times four, and that's it. Okay, so five times three, is 15, and then 15 times four is 60. So my answer for that first question is 60 inches, and I can't forget that little cubed exponent there, okay? So I can write it like that, or I can write it as 60 CU inches. And that's my answer.